Uh, thanks very much, Chris. Uh, I think before I explain quite clearly, I think you all know what uh, recycling and waste does. You know, we're not part of the digital revolution. You'll you'll still be there. So this is something that we've got to handle for years to come, but it's definitely changing. Just to brief really over what we are, see so quick understanding, but also to look at the, the recycling waste contracts as we go forward, uh, and then really the key bits, which is the funding. Uh, explain a bit about ourselves. Largest waste disposal authority in the UK, 2.27 million population, nearly a million households. A major urban area, and I will stress that, uh, but certainly significant tonnage as we move forward. Formed back in 1986, after the change in, in government, uh, we cover nine councils. Uh, we're a hung body, for want of a better word. Uh, so dealing with the politics is certainly uh, a core part of the business when we actually have, have run through the whole of our procurement and moved forward. But this has not been a political issue. This has worked very well between the Conservatives, the Liberals and the Labour Party as we've actually moved through it. And the one thing I've benefited from is actually having a stable uh, Conservative, Liberal and Labour lead as far as this has gone through the, the process. Uh, yes, we dispose of 5% of the nation's waste. It used to be 6%, but we have actually managed to get the, the waste hierarchy to drive some out of it. Uh, and we did own the, I think it was the eighth biggest waste company in the UK, uh, Greater Manchester Waste, which was our local authority waste disposal company. And that was the major benefit. We actually had the assets. We hadn't sold those off at any time in the past. So those were really a cornerstone for moving forward as we actually stem forward out of that. Brief about the contract. It's 25 years. Uh, major investment. And that covers both what's been invested in the primary treatment and also in the final treatment and really that was to replace the 1970s setup that we'd actually created so we had come to the end of our life that had run between 30 up to 30 years and also a lot of the infrastructure we had there for civic community sites or household waste recycling centres had been there a lot longer than that uh, 1.2 million tonnes uh, and quite clearly, we were mainly landfill driven because that was where we came from. Uh, and the thing that we actually went for all the way from beginning to end was not just to take the disposal element of it, to actually tackle the collection element as well. But we are not responsible for collection. That's been made quite clear to me, let alone anybody else. Uh, just a real reflection over the policy drivers. Uh, landfill tax, I suppose, when we started this off was £13 a tonne, rising by £1 a tonne. As you know now, it's now £80 a tonne come 2014 and continued liable to rise after that. But quite clearly, you know, some of our economic drivers there was actually the avoidance of landfill tax and also to meet our landfill tax allowance. That was the main thing that was there. It was unknown when we actually started the programme. But just to give you a picture of the scale, we had an allowance of 850,000 tonnes back for 2005 and we were not there until 2005 and by now we had to drop to 570,000 then 370,000 270,000 so very significant amount of waste had to move out of the waste stream so we had to have a solution that not only dealt with the recycling and the composting but dealt with the treatment of it thereafter to actually meet any of our obligations recycling target we were a very poor performer but quite clearly we only had a target of 20% to reach by 2005-06 and then 30% 30, 30 by the time we actually got through to 2010. Uh, yes, I'm not going to show you the slides. Quite clearly, we're already at 35% and we've got, we're going to get there without any, any hesitation whatsoever. The biggest thing that drove a lot of our changes was the public. The public saw that what we were doing was putting everything to landfill and that was not acceptable. And the public saw as well the investment had to go into recycling and composting, not just to take the waste. And uh, I saw one of our colleagues this morning was actually talking about the mass burn type solution as well. We were not going to burn it all. We had to put a balanced solution across the piece. And that's one that we actually went for. Uh, I suppose really 
rocks was coming in towards the renewable obligations. Really, that's now being driven forward because of renewables energy. So there's a lot more policy drivers going to come at people. You know, we're dealing with municipality waste rather than municipal waste. We're dealing with the landfill bans that may very well come off. And we're going to be dealing with climate change and the carbon trading gear that we move into in the future. That just shows you a quick picture on the lats. Uh, the first thing that I had to tackle was the fact I didn't want waste growth. Uh, if we had continued to, to grow our waste streams, and you know, we've seen the waste hierarchy, waste minimisation, you know, I wish it was digital, I don't want it, that would have taken me way over 2 million tonnes. So that was the first thing I had to set up to do. What we have delivered is to actually take that waste streams down, and you can see from our allowances, you know, most certainly I've got a surplus we've got rolling forward. And when you consider that's 5% of uh, the target for the UK, it really is a lot to actually change round in a short amount of time. Major benefits that we're proud of are the climate change benefits. It's everything now that's on everybody's agenda. Uh, most certainly, you know, our landfill allowances are above the 15%, but we are most certainly going to get there. As far as moving the waste is concerned, we've actually used railheads. We used railheads where we were originally with moving to landfill, and we continue to do that as we actually start moving a solid recovered fuel outlet. Uh, those will all go by rail. So we're taking thousands of vehicle movements off the road, and we're going to maintain that as we're going, going forward. And although we've got a target of 50%, which we will achieve under this contract, there's no doubt about it, we can go a lot farther than that as we actually move forward. I'm not going to bore you with uh, some of the other parts of it, but one other thing, Ineos Claw, the, the solution there for us came about because whilst we were doing the procurement, what we had to do was consider what the market was going to be. And that one I'll reflect on later. But, you know, we're only, only going to supply part of their 20% of their needs. You know, I mean, that is a major chlorine facility in the UK. And the th last but not least at the bottom, if you can see it, is we are actually spending a considerable amount of money from the authority on actually waste prevention and education. We've got to change the agenda going forward. So the collection systems. Uh, quite clearly, with nine collection authorities under varying political stages and also varying performance, the first thing we had to do was actually align the collection systems across the nine. I can tell you that was not difficult. It's a bit like herding cats, but I won't get into that one. Uh, quite seriously, we've adopted a policy that we needed to get the alignment because we needed to build certain facilities and we needed them all to actually step up to actually achieve the overall growth that we're going to have overall. Our concentrations on the green waste, which also takes food waste and also can take food waste separately. Paper and cardboard, we collect that together. I didn't want paper and cardboard going through an MRF system. Not only does it clog up the MRF, but it doesn't allow it to be technically feasible to achieve 95% performance that I want from a technical solution. Glass plastics and cans, that's what goes through the MRF. That works very nicely to us. And last but not least, the, the mixed waste. What I would say is that's what the public has responded to. And they've responded to far greater than what we originally estimated. They want an easy system. They want something that says, what do I do with yellow pages? Just put it in the same bin. What do I do with Tetra Pak? Put it in the same bin. What do I do with cardboard? You know, so start at the doorstep, but also look all the way through. And most certainly, the costs of collecting separately totally outweigh uh, a cost of actually providing an MRF. Uh, and it gives us, as far as we're concerned with the industry, a quality that they actually responded to. And we did test that as we were actually going through the market.